for discussion on a matter of urgent public importance which has appeared in the front page of one of the leading newspaper of Shillong, the Highland Post, dated 15 September 2022, under the caption, James has insulted Torres, Reverend Karpongor. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Kasi Jaintia Christian Leaders Forum, President Reverend Edwin H. Karpongor, said that the announcement in the assembly by the Minister of Taxation has shocked church leaders and also hurt the sentiment of people who are against gambling. In addition, Reverend Karkomar said that when the KJCLF met the Honorable Chief Minister Sri Conrad Sangma in May this year, the Honorable Chief Minister made it clear to the forum that the government would not rush into setting up of casinos and offline gaming in the state. Mr. Speaker, sir, as a public representative who is chosen by the mandate of the people, I understand the feelings and sentiments of the people of the state. The public opinion is gaining momentum, particularly the Kasi Gentia Christian Leaders Forum, who are against the Michalia Regulation of Gaming Act 2021, the Michalia Regulation of Gaming Rules 2021 and granting of license for setting up of casinos in the state of Mekhalia. Mr. Chairman, sir, it be me mentioned that the people of our state expected the state government to act as a protector, a defender, and good leader in leading the state of Mekhalia. And it is expected that the government should formulate a good public policy and as well as that it should take utmost care of the public sentiment. Now with the gaming in the name of uh, gambling in the name of gaming is made legalized in the state of Mekhalia, the public are extremely saddened and unha unhappy with the public policy of the state government right from the clans, the locality, the village administration in the urban and rural areas. The county, the elders of different religious bodies. This has spoiled the good relationship between the public and the government. Can we earn the trust of the public when the policy is true are wrong. Actually, the government should take the confidence of the public of the state while enacting new laws or implementing new uh, policy. Mr. Chairman, sir, in this context, may I refer to the piece of legislation known as the Opium Law initiated by the late Reverend J.J.M. Nicole Troy that was passed in the Assam uh, Legislative Council in 1927 to prevent sale of opium which had cleansed the use of this dangerous intoxicant in the province of Assam at the time. In the same way, we should prevent gambling, we should prevent <coughs> gambling addiction of the people by strengthening and give more power to the Mekhalia Prevention of Gambling Act 1970. Hence, in the greater interest of the public, I urge upon the government of the day to kindly repeal, abolish, and scrap the Mekhalia Regulation of Gaming Act 2021, the Mekhalia Regulation of Gaming Rules 2021 
and to cancel all license for setting up of casinos in the state of Meghalaya. Sir, allow me to allow me to, sir, just uh, briefly go into the entire background of uh, this entire regulation of gaming, uh, the act that was passed by the Meghalaya government. Sir, as rightly mentioned by the honorable member, the purpose of this particular act was to regulate things. So what has been happening in our state is that for many, many years, different kinds of games connected to gambling have been taking place. And it's taking place throughout the state, sir. But there is no regulation or no rules to actually take care of them or to ensure that there is a proper legal regulatory framework. And hence, today, if this rule is not in place, then many different gaming zones or gaming areas can come up without any rules or laws to actually define what they should do and what they should not do. And it is precisely to ensure that our people are not affected and our youth are not, as you mentioned, get into the habit of gambling. That the rules specifically say that locals cannot play. What does that mean? That means that in any place, if there's a gambling or any kind of this activity going on, locals will not be allowed to be playing, which is exactly what you said, that we must prevent and protect our youth from getting into it. So as of now, if we scrap this, then our youth can play. Our youth can go into these gaming zones, some will pop up here, there. There will be no regulation on how they function, how they will not function. So the purpose is exactly what the Honorable Member has mentioned, and I wanted to clarify that. So in the absence of these rules, our local boys and girls may be able to play in this different kind of gaming zones. And these rules prevent locals from playing. And that is where the prevention and protection of our youth comes in. If this is scrapped, then our youth will be free to go and play in these places. So hence, sir, this regulation was meant from that purpose. Number two, sir, there was a move, there was a move, an intention to gain more revenue. So in the last many sessions, we have seen that uh, different revenue sources, especially from our uh, mining department and other departments, have drastically gone down. Where there was a time when we used to earn uh, close to 600, 700 crores in terms of royalty. Today, those numbers are down to 100. And uh, expenditures are only growing. And hence, there was a thought that tomorrow, if we have to build more schools, if we have to build more hospitals, if we have to recruit more employees and uh, give more employment to our people, if we have to pay the different teachers, uh, even though they are ad hoc non-government uh, teachers, but the demands are there, as Honorable Minister was answering that time, that 1,500 crores plus we spend on different grant and aids given to different schools. This all requires money. And hence, was there a way to balance the entire process where we would ensure that revenue, maybe even up to four to five to six hundred crores with the license as well as with the taxation of GST was what we expected that these kind of revenue could give us. So hence, we had to raise revenue and look at opportunities. But we also realized as a government, we need to protect our people from the different activities. And hence, we thought we thought that we should have gaming zones which are far away from the core of the state, far away from the capital, in areas which are at the border areas. And somewhere there will make feasible sense for us to have these kind of activities and different kind of uh, gaming zones so that our people are not nowhere close to it. We have rules in place to ensure that locals cannot play. 
And hence, we thought that it would be a win-win situation for the state, where we would be able to bring up about five, 600 crores of revenue, and at the same time protect our people and not, in, not allow our people to be there, and hence protect the overall interest of the state, and especially of the youth. So with that intention, we had processed and tried to move forward in this line. And accordingly, in different stages, all the way from January of this year, almost close to eight people have applied for these licenses. And then the due process of going into the background, different activities, requires quite a lot of exercise to be done. This entire exercise was done. Once this exercise was done, and as the information was going out to the public, there was no specific uh, mention to me, or no voice that was raised specifically by anybody, and the process was going on. So we as a government thought that the whole logic with which we are going forward is something that is seeing a general acceptability. And the fact that we are going to earn revenue and at the same time protect our people by not allowing them to be in this, and these gaming zones will be far away from the main heart of the state. We thought that this idea had gone through and we would not face any problems. So based on that, in the month of March, while the process for these eight different applications was going on, three applications the process completed. And in the month of March, the dates are important. In the month of March, provisional licenses were given, which are valid for six months, where the concerned person has to build up the required infrastructure. And only after the different permissions and provisions are followed and permissions are given and different uh, processes are done, then the NOC is given from the department and the government side, and only then a full-fledged license is given. And if within six months the person does not complete the requirements, this provisional license lapses. This is the, uh, the, the provisions. Now, this was in March. While these three provisional licenses were given in March, the process continued, and slowly and steadily stakeholders started meeting. The church forum met me in the month of May. After that, some NGOs from Riboy met me this month. I categorically told the church leaders in the month of May that yes, we had thought in this process, in this line, and this was what our intention was. Our intention was very clear, to have a win-win solution for us. And hence we moved forward and we were reaching this place up to May. And when the church leaders met me in May, I realized that there was a concern. They felt that this should not move forward because people of the state need to be sensitized, we need to discuss, people need to be uh, made aware, people are worried that Shillong will turn into uh, Las Vegas and there will be different kind of uh, activities, so people are concerned. I informed them that there was never an intention to bring this to Shillong, never an intention to bring it even this side of uh, Burnley Hut Bridge, and we were looking at really purely a commercial side where we would be able to get, gather the revenue and at the same time protect our people. And even in that areas beyond there, which is close to Guwahati, even if our people wanted to play, they would not be allowed to enter. So I explained all of these things, but still the church leaders felt that no, they should not proceed. We have concerns. And hence, in May, in May, I told the church leaders that from this time onwards, we will not proceed with anything further. So from that point, all the rest of the five applications, and maybe more have come in by that time, but the records with me are only eight, and uh, so three, which were done in, May, uh, in, in March. From that point, for May, no further licenses, provisional licenses were given, based on my commitment that I gave to the church leaders, that now that you have told me this, I will put a stop to it, which I did. And I told them that there's no question of going further in, in ahead in this without consulting and without engaging and without taking the stakeholders on, on board. So I was very clear on that. In the similar lines, when we met the NGO and different stakeholders this month, I told them the same thing, that 
I have already committed to the church and to the different leaders that this matter and the concerns only after we are addressing those concerns, we take everybody on board, we will decide the future course of action. Till then, I will put a stop to it. And hence, from that time, from May till this month, September and beyond, we have not done any other step forward except those provisional licenses which were given in March, way before, two months before this forum had met me in the month of May. So what I'm trying to tell, sir, through you to the honorable member and the other members in the house, that uh, my statement stands, my commitment stands. I have always made it very clear that we are here to work with the people of the state. Yes, we have our ideas, we have our ways in which we would like to gain revenue and uh, serve the people, do, do different development programs. But obviously, if there's a concern that the people raise, it is the duty of the leaders and the government to listen. And we have done that in many forums, sir. It's not just this. I was mentioning about uh, you know, the CRPC issue with the district councils. I would like to inform the House that when district councils came to us and mentioned about this issue, we have, you know, uh, we have deferred the agenda more than, well, three times in the Cabinet because we thought that we should engage with the councils, explain to them what the issue is, and make them understand that in no way will this infringe into the powers of the district council courts because they are protected by the constitution. But they had concerns. We wanted, as a cabinet, we could have bulldozed. But that's not the way we would like to work. Not only that, even after deferring it three times and having official unofficial discussions, at my level, I called the district councils twice, explained to them once, they were quite satisfied. They came back again. They said, no, we have more concerns. So I sat a second time with them. And again, we had detailed discussion. And now still they are going through the details of what we explained. And they are more or less seeing the logic in which what we are going forward. And I am very sure and hopeful that through this dialogue and engagement, we will find a way forward. And I keep mentioning to everybody that as a government and as a chief minister, I never believe in fighting from a position. Yes and no. It can never work. We have to always negotiate and talk on issues. What is your issue and what is my issue? Can we find a way where we can address all the issues and yet move forward? Do my concerns and your concerns, can it be addressed? And yet we can come together and move forward. That is how negotiation is done. And that's what we did in the different uh, challenges we faced. And I'm sure in the CRPC issue also that we are having challenges. Dialogue will resolve it. Similarly, in this case also, I strongly believe that we will be able to figure out and move forward and till then the commitment which I've given to the church, the commitment which I've given to the different organizations stands. And hence when the Honorable Minister that day made the statement, it was of course sounding very alarming because the church felt that when Chief Minister in the month of May had already given his word that nothing will move forward, how come these provisional licenses came in? So the answer to that is that those provisional licenses were given on the 29th of March 2021, two months before the meeting I had with the church leaders. And post the meeting with the church leaders and the NGOs, we did not move ahead in any of the other areas. And till today, there are more than five licenses or applications that are lying pending regarding the individual areas and the lands which they may have. Those are private property. They could put up a nice building there, they could start a swimming pool, they can have anything that there that's within a private property. But starting a gaming zone and starting any kind of other activity related to gaming will have to be done with the permission and with the license of the state government. Hence, I would like to assure the Honorable Member and the House that these were the different clarifications that were necessary. And um, we understand the concerns which are very, very genuine. And uh, we know that we need to move very carefully. We need to ensure that we engage and discuss with stakeholders, which is how we have always believed in running this government, is by engaging with people and not by confrontation. Because we have always believed that through dialogue and discussion, we can resolve issues. And if there are certain issues which not, cannot be resolved, well, we'll keep discussing. There is no problem. Today also we discussed about the railways. When I discussed with the Honorable Minister, Government of India, about the railways, I told him, that we are here and our people have genuine concerns. So we cannot just simply bulldoze. We need to understand both sides. 
and try to find out if there is a solution that can bring and the concerns of the government of India, government of Meghalaya and the concerns of organizations, can we somewhere find a path that will take care of these concerns and move forward. So in multiple situations, this government has given an example of how we will always work with the confidence of the people of our state. And even in an issue like this, let me assure the House and all the members and all the church leaders that through you and through this House, that in the month of May, the commitment that I had given to them stands. We will engage and only then decide on the way forward. And till then, we have clearly given instructions that nothing else will move forward. So with these few words, sir, and the clarification, and I hope that I have been able to satisfy the concerns of the Honourable Member, I would like to resume my seat. Thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, thank you for the reply from the Honourable Chief Minister. I just want to get the, the clarity. I was told that uh, since the Honourable Chief Minister has replied that the provisional license was issued in the month of March this year. Uh, we are running, you know, this is the this is September. So the license is valid for six months. May I know from the Honorable Chief Minister that the license issued, the provisional license issued is valid for six months. So if you uh, calculate from March till September, it's just all the six months. So it's going to lapse. Uh, sir, yes, the Honorable Member is correct that uh, it's valid for six months. And I have mentioned that it was issued on 29th of March. So I'm, my numbers are a bit weak right now. But yeah, so 29th of, I guess, September should be the day. But uh, uh, I mean, he can do the calculations later, sir. But March 29th and six months from that point. So I would presume it would be uh, 29th of September, sir. 